Hey, West Coast Johnny, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So I'm really excited because um, I've been getting so many people asking me to make fiberglass videos that I decided to... So right now I'm building a big wall and I'm putting stone on it, but I'm gonna stop that for a few days because I wanna make something out of fiberglass. So we're starting a new series called Fiberglass Freaks. And in each episode, we're going to make something out of fiberglass. We're gonna repair something. We're gonna create a mold. We're going to do all kinds of cool things with fiberglass. So in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reproduce this 1950s bullet planter. See that? So they call it a bullet planter because you know, it's kind of shaped like a bullet and it's fiberglass. It's only a 16th of an inch thick, super strong, lightweight. This is just a planter and the stand, this cute little stand, I'm going to recreate also out of 5 16ths round rod and we're going to have the little circles on the end and everything. So the first thing we need to do to this, since this is going to be the actual mold, is I need to sand all this down really good. And if you look close, it used to be 60 years ago, it was translucent with butterflies in it and you could see the butterflies, but over time, and maybe they faded, someone spray painted the whole thing orange and then gray, and then I found it. So as I'm stripping it down, I'm finding these butterflies. So the other thing is we're going to fiberglass this from the outside, not from the inside. And I'll show you why. If you fiberglass on the inside, so here's a wooden salad bowl and I waxed the inside really nice with the um, Carnauba wax. It's like a paste wax mold release. And uh, I put the fiberglass on the inside and then when it dries and it pops out, the texture and that really cool look that I like is on the inside and on the outside, it's really, really smooth. So I don't want the, the bullet planters to be really smooth on the outside. I want them to have that really cool fiberglass look where you can see the little fibers. Now we're gonna create a mold so we can make anywhere from one of these to a thousand of these. The sky's the limit. So I'm really excited. We're gonna go ahead and start. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sand all this down. I'm gonna keep getting it a lot smoother. And then we're going to uh, begin. So first thing we wanna do is just clean all this with acetone, get all the dust off, get everything off, okay? Everything off so that we could start putting our mold release wax on. It says three to five coats. We're gonna do five coats. Then the polyvinyl alcohol goes on. It's like you're waxing a car. It's gonna swirl it around. It's gonna create a haze. And we're gonna buff the haze off. And then that will be coat one. Then we're gonna do that four more times. second coat we're gonna put a bunch of wax on here and just really give it a nice thick coat Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and put a final coat on it, then hit it again with the pneumatic polisher. Once the pneumatic polisher does its magic, this is going to be extremely glossy because what's cool about this particular compound is it's a high gloss wax paste. So it's, it's the gloss finish that's going to help release the mold from here through the new the new uh, bullet planter that we're going to create literally over it uh, with the help of uh, polyvinyl alcohol. So um, we're just going to put this on. Oh, 
little circles just like this. You don't want to just go like this. You want to work it in. You got to work it in. See that butterfly? We don't want the fiberglass to get hung up in that because there's still a relief from the butterfly. There's a relief. Okay, so what we're gonna use, we're gonna use what's called chop strand matting or CSM. And uh, it's either this kind of fiberglass where it's chopped or you can get the other type of fiberglass. It's more, uh, it's woven. We don't want that. And I'll tell you why. Because for one, this is a conical shape. And when it's conical, meaning round everywhere, like the nose of an airplane, you can't just put a piece over it because it's, you know, not gonna work. You'd have to tear it all. It's So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use little pieces like this. We're gonna put more up here, more up here. You know, we're gonna go all around with pieces this big. And the best way to get them this size it's you don't want to use scissors and cut you want to make a little tear okay so that you don't actually cut through the fibers but you're just kind of uh separating them okay so now uh when when one piece goes over another piece see it'll blend really nice and we want to build this new one up to 1 16th of an inch doesn't sound like a lot, but actually that's all this one is. And this is, uh, you know, one of the old ones. So we're just gonna make it exact. All right, well, it's the next morning. And what I've got to do is cut enough pieces of fiberglass about this size, maybe a little smaller, to go around this. And we want to, to have four full layers of fiberglass on this to build up our 1 16th of an inch. So I've got to cut, it takes about eight of these to cover this. So I got to cut 32 of these all together. And I'm going to show you how we do it. Well, here's how I came up with how much fiberglass I need. So if I measure this, this is a one and a half ounce chop strand matting. We're right about at 15 thousandths of an inch and this right here this the, what we're going to recreate is uh exactly 60 thousandths of an inch so we just need four layers of this matting to build that thickness up so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to show you how to cut the pieces you don't want to cut them with scissors. That's like the worst thing you can do because all this chop strand matting is, what it actually is, if you look close, they call this e-glass. It's extruded filaments and they're all put in different angles and there's a binder that is holding all of these and giving them strength. So rather than just cutting it with the scissors, we're gonna do a light score and then I'm going to show you how I just tear it because when it's when it you tear it you can mix it together a lot better it'll be a lot stronger okay so we're just going to make a very light score There we go, there's two pieces.
exactly what you want the edges to look like. Unfortunately, that's just the edge of the roll. So we're going to put this in an area maybe down towards the, the lip of the bowl, the lip of the planter, because we're going to have a hard edge there anyways. So all these pieces, see I'm tearing them and I'm keeping them all together. Okay, got a whole bunch on this tray. You want to get your stuff measured out, laid out. Like I said in many videos, the last thing you want to do is to start cutting your fiberglass pieces that you want to work with after you mix your resin. You want to have everything ready to go, then mix your resin. You won't be in a hurry and you only have so many minutes before the resin actually starts to kick off. So we don't want to be racing. So our next step before we put the fiberglass onto the mold is we want to put some polyvinyl alcohol over the wax and what this will do it'll create a skin like a really thin layer like a film and the nothing will stick to the mold it'll pop it right out we're going to mix this up i like to spray it so i'm going to use it a little spray bottle and then the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to experiment with some colors in the resin so fiber lay makes this blue red pigment they call it. it's called flato blue red shade we're going to mix a little of that in our resin you always want to wear safety glasses around this kind of stuff, too. You know, I'm just going to go like this because it's kind of thick and I don't want it to drip. So this is perfect. Laminating resin. On a project with fiberglass, you never want to use a resin like for instance, this is a laminating resin. You, that's what you want. You don't want a casting resin like, you know, when you make projects or you make these uh, ocean wave tables and stuff. That's just like casting resin. This is completely different. This is for bonding things together. So we're going to go ahead. Mix up four ounces. Okay. So that's exactly 2%. So you want to get a little tool like this. They're for rolling and they're designed to not only hold the fabric down and get all the air bubbles out, but it lets the resin come back up to the top. You want to brush some of the resin on. Okay. The nice thing about this chop strand matting is it wets out really easily especially with this nice uh, polyester resin other piece on right here
Okay, put a little more on like this. I'm going to put it actually like this. You want to make sure the fiberglass goes all the way to the bottom so that when we trim it off, it'll look really nice. You really got to roll it good with this conical shape because it gets bubbles really easily. Okay. Okay, well we went around the entire bullet planter with um, a, an entire coat of fiberglass and we overlapped them several times. So we're going to let this sit up. You don't want to put more than like three layers on at a time because there's a thermal reaction that can happen. So we're just putting two on at a time or one on at a time. And the other thing, you don't want to use epoxy resin. You want to use polyester or vinyl ester resin because the way fiberglass is made in the chop strand matting that the e-glass is it's it's a uh, extruded filaments of glass and they have binders in them that keep them really rigid okay so what happens when you put the epoxy resin on you can have a real hard time getting the fiberglass to form but if you use polyester or vinyl ester resin, it's going to melt those binders that are keeping the e-glass strands rigid and it's going to conform better. As always, thanks for stopping by.